Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Um, Jazakallah for joining us for this Vakfino uh, uh, virtual retreat. Uh, today we, we've been listening to uh, excellent stories uh, and very inspirational stories from all of the Vakfin from, uh, uh, from UK and from across the world. Uh, we are very honored and privileged to have been joined by uh, a special guest um, and uh, a special guest who has been who, who who has had a privilege to work very closely with Hazrat Amirul Mominin, Aidha Allah Taala bin Asli Aziz. Uh, we are joined by Umar Alim Sahib. Uh, Umar Sahib is uh, uh, head of uh, Maksan e Tasawir, which is the pictorial archive of uh, Jamaat Ahmadiyya Muslima. And uh, Umar Sahib uh, has had the honor of uh, photographing Huzur on many. Uh, many trips around the world. Um, so some of you are already familiar with, with the Umar Sahib. Uh, but what we would like to focus on is uh, firstly, uh, Umar Sahib, firstly, Jazakallah for joining us. It's a, it's a privilege to have you here and, and Jazakallah for sparing some time. Um, so Umar Sahib, Umar Sahib is someone who's had a very comfortable life before, uh, before Vakfi Zindagi. And, and there is actually a very inspirational story before you, before you actually decided that you want to be a vakfi zindagi, uh, before you know, before um, uh, you know, without getting into too much detail, I'd, we'd like to actually hear from you. So, Umar sir. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak to my brothers. First of all, I would like to take liberty to say something here. You said that I had a life when I was very comfortable. I would say that this life is much more comfortable. Um, <clears throat> yes, inwardly means, obviously, people try to elude all the time. And this is one of the things which everybody had in his mind, that he wants to do well in life. He wants to have bread and butter provided for the family. Um, when I... Um, came into this country in 1996, I came to study and I had an honor of actually uh, working in MTA from 96 onwards and I had my degree in media production with video and photography and I had worked with MTA and with Huzur Khalifa Nusri Rabe for some time and um, I was just a normal MTA employee working and just day to day freelancing and earning money whatever. Every time I had thought about actually presenting myself for Waqf. Something was just as like a, you know, something coming into my mind that, okay, what will happen? It will be a small allowance. How would I do this? How would I do that? So these kind of things, like any other normal man, I used to just have it all the time in my mind. And one day, uh, I remember in 2008, it was Friday and Huzur delivered sermon uh, just before Khilafat uh, De Jalsa, we had an Excel center. I think it was a week before or two weeks before. Huzur in detail mentioned those people who had given a lot of uh, sacrifices and uh, money and all other things to Jamaat uh, or because 100 years of Khilafat were achieved and uh, people were sending gifts and they were sacrificing and sending a lot of stuff. So it was such a detail of certain incidents about certain people. I was on the camera and uh, something happened and I, st I was just literally in tears thinking that I am not able to give anything because I didn't have anything. And uh, then a another thought came into my mind that any money which is coming my way, it's my pay and this is from Jamaat anyway. So I felt really weird that it's coming from Jamaat and I'm gonna go back and return some money back to Jamaat. So I had this, something going on in my mind is like a debate. And uh, later that night, all of a sudden, something happened and I realized that, look, I have got a, uh, I've got myself to present. No matter if I don't have anything to give, why can't I just give myself to Jamaat? So I just got this commitment inside my heart that tomorrow, luckily I had a mulaqat as well. So I just went and I gave my waqf letter to private secretary sahab and I went in for mulaqat. And when my mulaqat finished, I was about to get up I asked Huzur, I said, Huzur, I've presented my work this morning. So Huzur looked at me and he says, Acha, kar diya. And uh, means that, okay, you have done it. And I said, Jizur. And Huzur says, so, okay, so what did your wife say about it? Did you discuss it? And uh, I said, Huzur, um, she was saying that I don't see how different will you be because the way you are at the moment, I think it will stay the same. 
एंड बिफोर आई कुड एफ सेड एनी थिंग हजू सेड हाँ हाँ मुझे मालूम है तुमने कितना पूछा होगा और क्या जवाब आया होगा सो आई गॉट क्वाइट स्केड एंड आई थॉट मे बी दैट्स इट बट आई जस्ट जैट इन माई लेटर आई जस्ट मैंशन आई सेट हजूर आई गॉट माई सेल्फ टू गिव आई गॉट नथिंग एल्स अलहमदिल्ला वट हैपन इज द नेक्स्ट मुलाकात वो माजिद साहब से मुलाकात द वकील तबशीर एंड लेटर ऑन ही कॉल्ड मी एंड ही सेज हजूर ने आपका वक्त मंजूर फरमा लिया हैज़ बीन एक्सेप्टेड सो कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन यूर वक्त जिंदगी नाउ सो आई जस्ट आई वॉज जस्ट लकी दैट हजूर यू नो एम जस्ट सच अजलेस मैन हजूर जस्ट गिव मी दिस ऑनर बाई एक्चुअली एक्सेप्टिंग माई वक्फ एंड आई नेवर लुक बैक फ्राम दैन आई टेल यू वन थिंग फॉर माई पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस आई नो दैट मैनी लिसनर्स आर लिसनिंग टू मी ऑल माई लिटल ब्रदर्स आर लिसनिंग टू मी एंड एवरीबडी हैज दिस पीपल इवेल्यूएट दिस इज़ अ नेचुरल फिनमिना द एनी थिंग यू डू इन लाइफ यू जस्ट वॉन्ट सम सिक्योरिटी बट वन थिंग आई नो फॉर श्योर वॉट इज़ अ वक्फ यू आर जस्ट गिविंग यूर सेल्फ वो एवर यू हैव वट एवर एबिलिटी यू हैव यू गिविंग इट टू अल्लाह हाउ कम द द वन हु इज़ द प्रोवाइडर वैन यू गिव यूर सेल्फ टू हिम हाउ कैन इन रिटर्न इज नो गुक आफ्टर यू सो फ्रॉम माई पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस आई नो that there is nothing which i wanted and i never got and there is nothing which i wanted to get and i didn't get and working with khilafat and the honor and in his shadow whatever he does is just a guidance for you mm-hmm. if you just head down working i think there is no way back you just move forward so this is what it is Jazakallah Jazakallah Umair sahab now you've as i was mentioning you've had a privilege of uh, working very closely with Hazur Aid Al-Talab bin Aziz and i'm sure there are many um, incidents of interactions with Hazrat Amir al-Mu'minin and you've also had the honor of traveling with Hasab on many occasions um are there are there any special moments that you like to share with us in my experience every time you are in the company of hazrat khalifat ul masih it's a special moment of because course, course. anything he says whether small or big it, it is just a guidance in itself apart from it as my previously i was hearing my brother he was mentioning that huzur says a small thing and allah mias will just changes it completely yes, for you yes. i've seen many incidents yes. in life like that i mean for instance my first ever travel to africa for me it is a bi- it was a big thing what happened is that uh, when huzur went to west africa in 2000 and i think it was four i was in here i was in gone to pakistan for holidays and i was not here so i wasn't obviously picked up or whatever so i couldn't travel with huzur at that time but later when huzur was going to east africa um it was two months prior it was one of the weddings of mta my colleague umar safir it was his wedding and huzur um called me close and he says if i take you to east africa would you go and i was just shocked and i said huzur jazakallah i would be more than happy mm-hmm. and huzur said okay get ready then you are going to east africa i was like over the moon and uh, when the time came near for whatever reason i wasn't in the uh, list or anywhere from mta perspective like the empl- the people who were traveling my name wasn't there so i was even told that look you mentioned that huzur said that you are going to east africa so how come your name isn't there mm-hmm. i just like what can i do about it i mean i'm sure that huzur said then i will go mm-hmm. so it was carrying on and then it came to a time when i thought i'm not going because the kafla was decided and mta boys were decided and uh, many people said to me the right to huzur and remember remind him that he said that he will take you and only one thing which was stopping me i said no huzur will not forget huzur said i'm going then i will go and if it's god's will then i will go so the only thing i did i was praying and what happened is that just before 3 days before i remember majid sahab called me and he says um huzur wants you to get ready you are going with the kafla you are not going with the mta team because uh, there is no time <laughs> so you will be going to get vaccinated and huzur is taking you later on i found out that one of the mta boy um he had some trouble with his paperwork and he wasn't able to travel so last minute alamia um gave me an opportunity to join huzur Mashallah mashallah there's a there's a particular incident that you shared with me the other day which is about Hasab's work ethics and how Hazur Aidatul Abbin says he's how persistent he is when it comes to getting things done and which is related to an an exhibition that you were displaying and and a complaint that came from someone yes i remember would you like to would you like yes, to share yes, that sure. story i mean we have this exhibition from Magzana Tasawir in Jalsa Salana 
And there is a big exhibit. We have more than 14 or 1500 photos exhibited there. So there's a section of martyrs. And I remember, because I can't be there all the time because I'm doing photography at Jalsa. So I came back and the team boys uh, told me that an Indonesian brother was quite upset because he's saying that you guys didn't display any martyrs from Indonesia. So we just didn't have much to say to him. We said we don't have them. And he kind of complained. So later on when I had a mulakat, I mentioned this to Huzur that this what happened and the Indonesian brother was upset. Huzur said that definitely he's right, it's your fault. It's <laughs> you are in the wrong. If the photos aren't there, this is your responsibility. And I said, uh, Huzur, I tried uh, asking a couple of times. Huzur says, these are excuses. If, if you try hard enough and you get on people's case, you get your work done, there is no, um, uh, there's no way that you won't get it done. So it's just about you. You didn't take it seriously. You'd have taken it seriously. You made 15 calls every day. They would have given it to you. I came back embarrassed and I thought, OK, I'm going to do this now. And I tell you this formula. Since that day, I understood that how to get work done. I just got on Indonesian Zimat's case. I was like, every day I was phoning them. And 100% like his words, within three days, I had all the photos. Yes. And then they were displayed. I mean, this is such a good example for our work, you know, that if, if, you're, uh, if you're really motivated yes. and your objective is to get the work done, as Hassa was advising you, that, you know, just get on with it, right? And, and try, to, try to get to the end, it's end just, goal. It's just the, the, the first thing which comes to mind that, you know, how, how uh, magical the personality becomes. I mean, yes. obviously, he's a Khalifa al masih yes, But anything Huzur says, he does it first. Mm -hmm. It's like a practical example of anything he's preaching. Yeah. Many times we see preachers giving long, 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 long speeches and they don't act on them. But the difference between them and the Khalifa of the time, that I remember one time we went to Adelaide from Sydney. And um, it was a long journey, but Huzur, because we were traveling light, we were meant to go in the morning and came, come back in the evening because it was just some activity there and it was a day trip. So I remember we didn't even have luggage with us. Anyway, Huzur, when we got there, Huzur carried on with his program, which was given to him. And uh, when he finished his uh, prayers, Asar and Zohar, um, the local management requested Huzur there and then on the spot when Huzur was leaving the marquee that please lead, uh, uh, please read some uh, Amin's. For the, for the kids who were sitting there. I Probably they were Vakhvino or whatever. So Huzur wasn't very happy with that, that all of a sudden you guys made up your own program. This is not good. So Huzur kind of left from there. And, uh, you know, they were, it was a, a thing which was, everybody was upset that, look, Huzur is now upset because of us. So they, they were very guilty about it. But then Huzur wanted to teach them some, you know, um, that how things are done because he was quite particular with yes, programs and yes. everything. So Huzur went... Anyway, so the, when the day was finishing and Huzur was going back, we were supposed to go back to the airport. I remember I was standing outside his residence and he came a little early. He opened his door and I was there and he called me and he says, why are you standing here? I said, Huzur, I see, just standing there. He goes, go and look for those boys or girls who were sitting there for Amin. Uh, my intention wasn't to hurt them. I just wanted to teach a little uh, lesson to the management. Now go and get all of them. So I quickly ran and with some help of some khudam, I gathered all of the boys and girls. They were over the moon and they couldn't believe Huzur was calling them. So by the time Huzur came out, and I still remember that uh, Major Sa was just holding the Quran. Yes. And as Huzur was flipping pages and while he was standing in the crowd, because crowd started gathering around Huzur and it was literally a small car park kind of a place. And Huzur did all the amins. I mean, many people were just in tears. I just could not believe how soft Huzur's actual heart is. And I can tell you guarantee that Huzur didn't even sleep properly because his eyes were all red. He came out and he did all those amines and he gave them some chocolates and everything. Hello. At that point when Huzur was telling something to a person from the management that you should have done it this way, he did what I did with the Indonesian incident. He said, Huzur, I tried ki thi. I tried and then I gave up. And Huzur says, remember one thing. When you say the word koshish, which is try, it's, it's never in the past tense. It's always in the present tense. Say, Main koshish kar raha hoon. Main koshish karunga. You do not say, Main koshish ki thi. Means that don't say that I tried and I gave up. Because uh, if you have given up, it's a sin. Yes. Yes? Right. So you don't do that. You carry on doing until the work is done. Mm. And that shows how particular Huzur is yes. yeah. with the... Um, and this is such a beautiful incident where Hasab is not only uh, teaching the management, the, the protocol and the structure that should be in place, right? So there's a particular honor and respect that you should give to 
any member that's coming from Markaz, but this is your Khalifa al So your yeah. management should be structured and, and the plan should be already in place and, and uh, conveyed to Hazrat Khalifa al or his, his staff. But the second thing was the, the, the merciful nature of Hazrat Amir al where he felt that the, the you know the ch the children are innocent, right? Yes. So, so they should be called in, and their I mean should should be done. And at the same time, Hasab is is telling everyone that you know you should always keep trying. Yeah, it's just you a beautiful not, balance of everything. Yes, of I mean, uh, anything he says, whether with love or with anger, there is a, is a message coming out of mm -hmm. it, and it's just a mess. It's it's up to us to actually learn something from it. Yes, of course. I mean, during this uh, during this these lockdowns that we all of us are experiencing. Uh, Hassab is every day as at the Mirror Mominin, Hazur is in the office and he is carrying on with his duties. And you've had the honor of capturing many malakats, many meetings that Hazur have had during those lockdowns. Would you like to share you know, some of those with us? Alhamdulillah, in the beginning of the lockdown, this was a, everybody had this question that how is it going to carry on? And uh, Anything which happens, I mean, it just turns out to be God's will and the way Alamia brings more opportunity from nowhere is just amazing yes. because now Huzur is able to speak to people without going to their country yes, and he course. whenever he wants to. Mm -hmm. So it's just a beautiful experience of Huzur looking at Huzur, um, talking to people who didn't even dream of meeting Huzur like that. So now it's opened another complete new chapter for Jamaat yes, and um, Alhamdulillah as a, as a part of it. I go there and experience, but the thing is, we had many, I mean, personally, we are all designed this way that, okay, there's a lockdown, let's just don't do this, don't do that. Huzur is very clear. The man of God is always very clear. I've mm -hmm. seen one thing about Huzur, that's my personal experience, whether it is, whatever matter it is, Huzur is 100% clear about his decisions. He is never in a, um, you know, when we say well, there is a dilemma, I'm thinking, shall I do this, shall I do that? There's never, I've never seen Huzur like this either is this way or the other he's yes. very clear and many times I've covered press conferences and I see these worldly journalists trying to pitch their very clever question trying to kind of uh, in a very clever way trying to trap trying to frame and yes they yes, want yeah. certain lines out yes, from Hazus yeah. and then Hazus is really focused he's yes. clear he yeah. would give you just one answer mm. Every time you can't really uh, deviate his attention from, from you know, the way you wanted to put words in his mouth, you can never do yes. that. Huzur is 100% always very clear. And this is one sign of a man of God of the shows. Tr the truth of the promised Messiah, yes. and, 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 and anything Huzur yes. says. I mean, I remember in 2006, if you let me, I tell you something that I was on a Pakistani passport and uh, I traveled to Japan with Huzur and we, I think, went from New Zealand. And uh, at Jap Japanese immigration, at that time in 2006, it was just quite simple. The only question the guy asked me, how many people are you in the entourage? And I said, we are 12. And he says, okay, go and sit in that room. He just pointed out a small cubicle, which mm -hmm. was made of glass doors, glass walls. So I went there and I just sat there because I didn't know what is going on. I thought maybe they're checking something. Anyway, the wait became longer and longer and it ended up with like 30, 40 minutes. And I started panicking thinking that what should I do? The kafla must have gone, Huzur mm. must have gone out. Uh, yeah. They have probably received Huzur and nobody would probably remember the where is Umair. So I was really scared. And then Umar Safir joined me there as well. And I said, how come you are here? You're a British passport holder. What is going on? And he says, well, they just told me to stay here as well because they've got something to do with my passport. Mm. Anyway, um, it, it was nearly 40, 50 minutes or uh, more than an hour before we got out of that room after whatever interroga interrogation they had. And when I came out, I remember talking to Umar and I said, Umar, we are left behind. Uh, let's see how we go, uh, go back to the mission house. I don't know anybody here. We don't even know the language, any sign door or anything. And we were just discussing how to make our way out or maybe somebody is left behind to take us with them. And uh, I still remember there were like escalators going down. And I saw Huzur's Pagadi coming up like this. And I, I, my, my just heartbeat just stopped. And I said, Huzur is here. And then all of a sudden, Huzur came up. And he grabbed my hand, he goes, Kya hua? why were you uh, stopped? Yes. And uh, I was quite scared and I said, Huzur, and he says, tell me. And the uh, rest of the kafla, Huzur said, let me speak to him. And Huzur, what happened? So I told Huzur. And the first thing came out from my mouth, Huzur, you yes. didn't go. Yeah. It's been more than an hour. And Huzur said, do you think I'm going to go? Can I leave my companions behind like this? Mashallah. If they would have asked me to wait another six hours, I would have stayed here. Mm. I just wanted to cry there basically because I just could not believe that Huzur could be 
so humble with us and this is how he thinks and uh, later on what happened in 2008 there is a journalist very famous journalist she came to t interview huzur uh, her name is Carla Power she came to take huzur's interview and uh, it was happening in huzur's office and she asked this question she says would you mind sharing anything which your great grandfather had told you or run in your family which you guys act on huzur said well i wasn't born when my great grandfather was alive but one thing which was passed on from my grandfather to my father and to ourselves mm -hmm that I can relate to and I can share with you and um, then she says please do and Huzur says well we were told that never leave your companions behind if you have a little journey with them make sure that you company all the way mm -hmm. you don't leave them halfway all of a sudden my mind took me back to I said Huzur is not just telling her this Huzur acts on it yes and he yeah. proved it yeah. that after two years this came to back to my mind that look Huzur did that in 2006 and this is how all the Kafla members yes. who had this opportunity of being with Huzur, whether it is the first time or whether you have been traveling every time, yeah. you would think that Huzur is not even looking at you. You would think that, okay, um, maybe I'm not in the attention circle right now. Maybe nobody's looking at me. But I tell you one thing though. This is one thing I would like to share that the times when you are humble and you are just in your zone and you're praying and you're doing the right thing. It's all about your niyat. Yes. Allah Mia has got his magical ways of just um, because everybody wants reassurance. Everybody wants that I'm standing out. I've seen many times. Recognition. That as soon as the namaz is finished, yeah. boys are running outside. Yes. They just want to see their khalifa. Yeah. Every time they had this Not in true. them. Yes. And a little smile from Huzur. Yeah. It's just like ref, uh, it's like recharging your batteries. Yes. You know, this is what I feel like yeah. when I go for mulaqat. Whether Huzur tells me off or whether he gives me love, I always feel that my battery is charged. And I know it is for every single Ahmadi mm -hmm. who goes out and stand and wait for his Khalifa. But I tell you one thing though, when you feel sometimes that Huzur hasn't looked at you, there is no much attention, Huzur is busy, what shall I do? At that time, in, not, don't do any worldly chalakiya, you know, don't try to do any clever business that okay, I can be in attention circle, no. Stay humble, pray to Allah Mia. Yes. And when you go to God, you actually automatically go to Khalifa. Khalifa the Messiah comes to you. Yes. And this is a automatic automation which is said by Alamia. You ask anything you want from God and uh, the Khuda ka Khalifa, he just comes towards you. Yes. This is what my personal experience is. I mean, this this shows that it's a, you know, as the Mirul Mu'minin is of course divinely guided, and uh, his his noble example are is the one that all of us should be following, right? Um, lastly, before we close, we have uh, only uh, two, two three minutes left. I, I like to touch upon Makhzan um, which is you know which is the department that you're heading, and the environment that all of us are growing up in, um, which is the social media environment. We have access to all sorts of material that is out there, and sometimes out of uh, out of excitement or out of innocence, we start posting things and we want people to like, share, or you know tweet or retweet uh, our material. So Makhzan um, has uh, has a you know has has been setting up or drafting policies in terms of how we should be operating. Would you like to, for the benefit of our Vakfin and Khudam and Atfal, would you like to share some of them? Yes, yeah, sure. It's a very you. simple thing. Um, Hazrat Muslim Islam, when he decided to have a picture done, when it was a purely purpose of tabligh, yes. that's what Hazrat has mentioned himself. He said that this picture I'm getting done. Is only for tabliq purposes. Any other worldly businesses, when you just hang it for no reason here and there, it becomes a source of bidat, which means that you started doing things which you shouldn't. So he was very particular about it. And there are many incidents which, when he stopped Sahaba not to use picture unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, automatically uh, there is a guidance there. It's of just course. that we chose to ignore it. Yes. And uh, the policies were always very clear. Mm -hmm. In terms of the security, in terms of the privacy of a certain personality or people or any other place, workplace, those were decided 1400 years ago. It, uh, it is us who don't look at it yeah. because we don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Now when the GDPR uh, law comes into place, people get excited, oh, the law is there, you know, but law has always been there. The thing is where they're getting extracting from, what mm -hmm. are they looking at? Mm -hmm. Quran has taught you that many, many years ago. You know, it's just us who's not acting on it. So yes. my only thing is that there is a certain protocol anywhere you go. There is work, work ethics and there is home ethics. Mm -hmm. You've got certain manners behaving inside your house and you have got certain manners in school and certain manners in any workplace where you go. 
Now, when it comes to social media, the mediums, the mediums which are always channelized, mm. you had radio, yeah. you had print media, and you had TV. Yeah. But social media has given you the opportunity to do whatever you feel like, yeah. and you send it live without thinking. Mm. Now, the only thing I see and I find a bit odd, and I, I see that there's a thought process we should be behind it, is that what are you posting yeah. and what is the need? Yes. Now, Jamaat has got a certain uh, guidelines, Huzur has got a certain um, uh, agenda all the time and Huzur is guiding. Now, what people do is, uh, for example, your privacy is something I like from you and I'll just take a picture without taking your permission <laughs> and post it on air. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe yeah. your posture is not yes. good and I've taken your side yeah. portrait yeah. and your eyes are squint and I just put, post it on yes. social media. You wouldn't like it. Yeah. But I won't care. I mm -hmm. will just do it. Alamia clearly says that this is not right. I mean, you should not uh, interfere in people's privacy. When you go to somebody's door, you knock three times. Yeah. Third time, if there is no answer, you go back. Yes. No, but we don't do that, do we? When we are on social media, there is no stopping. <laughs> so it's just that think what are you doing and the purpose of Hmm. posting photos, yeah. Yeah. purpose of tweeting, yeah. purpose of saying something on air to people, hmm. surely for the tabliq purposes. Yes. Yeah. If you have this uh, mentality, the niyat will be exposed, yes. that you just want to do it for your own fame. Yeah. So let me tell you something, that's just a small bubble which you live in and you think that you have one famous because some people are actually putting thumbs up on hmm. your <laughs> tweet. What you don't realize that you're a follower of somebody, hmm. And you are trying to make people your followers. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that takes you away from the core of the, the message. The purpose, the purpose it, dies yes, there and then. Because happening. the thing is, if you if you had some money, which was from Satka money, for example, yeah. and um, you want to uh, do sacrifice with it, if it's not halal money, it won't be accepted. But, because yes. it's a simple fundamental. Yes, you yeah. can't go read namaz without wuzu. Yes. And you can't have... Uh, stolen money and you do sadka with, with it. So if your m intention is only to uh, put yourself first, for example, I was there, mm -hmm. that kind of style, yeah. or you try to impress people, mm -hmm. then I think it is completely forbidden and Zakala. it shouldn't be the case. Zakala. No, I, I think it's a very good message that always think about the, the purpose and whether you're... Uh, and the you legality know, of and it. And the legality of it. Yes. Jazakallah, Umair Saab, uh, as, as I said earlier on, uh, it was a privilege to have you here. I know Umair Saab has uh, many other stories because Umair Saab did uh, Waqf in 2006, eight, 2008. Eight, 2008. Yes. 2008. So since 2008 and even before that, he, he has been working with Hazrat Khalifat Masih Rabbi Rahimullah and then Hazrat Amir Al-Mumini Naid Al-Talab and Aziz. And you know, we, would, we would like to have maybe another sitting with you in future if, if, uh, exactly. if the permission is granted. So Jazakallah, uh, Jazakallah, Asnul Jaza. Um, Zakala for uh, all of the Bakfina know that 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 are that have been listening to us uh, have joined us at home. Uh, we will now c conclude this uh, sp uh, special session, and uh, um, at the uh, other end is our is going to be our final session, uh, which is going to be presided by Sadr Majlis Khudam Lemdia. So Zakala and Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.